So, if you look at the status of uh, building energy codes, now you will find this, this was I think 2007 around and maybe they have now some of them might have taken cognizance. No standards are the green ones. For example, many of the African countries and Latin American countries, Argentina, Bangladesh, etc., they did not have. Some of might have might have actually brought in Djibouti, etc. Some have residential only. So that is Greece, Ireland, United Arab Emirates, but that might have gone gone to others others as well. And then uh, some have non-residential only. So, Mexico, Singapore and so on, Vietnam they have and all types of buildings many of them. For example, Australia, China, many countries. So, some have made it mandatory. So, this country is a mandatory. These countries, this is you know they have non-residential and these countries have both, but not mandatory, voluntary or mixed and this is proposed, right? this is proposed. So, uh, at that point of time this is proposed and this did not have. So, this actually this must have increased, the curve must be going like this. The concern about the energy is there very much all over the world and therefore, the curve must be now going like this. So, many countries do not have. Okay. But uh, there are different approaches other than this prescriptive approach and so on. There are different approaches other than other than prescriptive approach. One of them that is been adopted in Hong Kong is uh, um, you know uh, Hong Kong and some of those uh, uh, some of those uh, far eastern countries. Just a minute. Ek minute. Band kar dena. Right. Yes. Haji, us kora dena baad mein. Right. So some of the countries they have adopted uh, for the envelope something called overall thermal transmittance value. We will look into this for specific to envelope basically. right? So, total energy consumption in the building if you look at it, one side is the equipment, other is the you know envelope and other parts. So, this will have building envelope, lighting system, HVAC system and equipment and this will have electrical power, water heating, office equipment, other building services equipment. So, envelope when it comes to it is windows, skylights, etcetera, etcetera, which I think I might have shown you sometime, lighting related to this and HVAC equipment, where this will have electrical system, lift, escalator and so on. So, Overall thermal transmittance value is a kind of a value suggested in this part, you know, eastern many of these countries. What they did was, this was mainly for envelope part, other part of course is separate, same codes they will have other parts, but we will discuss only the envelope aspect. So, if you see historically 1970s, 80s and 1990s, now you know ASHRAE Okay. Before going to that, uh, people started realizing about the energy problem, although fairly early. You see some of the books written by uh, philosophers or in literature, uh, things like uh, hydrogen energy for ever. There are articles on that kind of thing. because. Can a scientific society be stable? 
by Barton Russell. So, this, this you know, because we are seeing that you are continuously increasing the energy use, where it is going to come from, because already we have seen that the total energy that was avail available, you know, by, I mean, even now, largely is from the sun, right. So, th but people started realizing this even more when uh, oil producing countries, they started controlling the prices of oil. So, 1970s around that time and uh, around that time I think or just before that YC came into ex being and then they started looking at it, can we reduce down the energy consumption. So, American Society of Heating Refrigeration Engineers 1975, they started looking right and then uh, they changed Singapore. Then, then, then of course, Australia then developed, you know, further advanced their code to 19, you know, 1980s and so on and 1990s, you know, they started further uh, developing their codes itself. So, historically, this is how the codes have actually gone. Singapore being one of the earliest, 1983 they started. Then Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand developed building energy codes in 1980s and 1990s and some of them adopted this concept called OTTB. Hong Kong has done a lot of research in OTTB concepts and even reinforced regulatory control by OTTB. So, I will define this what is OTTB and then how it can be used to control the envelope performance that is what I will talk about. So, this was you know they did it in 1990s and so on. India first code came in 2007. And it is quite stringent in the approach at that point of time because it was absolutely prescriptive than whole building performance. Now, given to the people who are involved in design, not having very great background in building physics, right, having, having uh, somewhat superficial knowledge of building physics, there is always, always tend to use a prescriptive guideline. If somebody is knowledgeable, then they would like to use something else. And of course, whole building performance can, one can use them mechanically if one knows how to handle the software. But before that, if you want to generate your own several design, you know the, you know, you got to have the knowledge base. But quite often, the building designers may not have the, uh, knowledge base, the scientific knowledge base, you know, required background required for that. So, often if given an option that I have a prescriptive option, I have a whole building performance option, tendency would be to go to the prescriptive which is likely to be conservative and uh, stringent in terms of, stringent in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, design. You cannot change much because flexibility is not available. So, this is quite stringent approach. So, more flexible approach is essentially something like this or whole building performance is definitely flexible. So, anyway this is the component which we talked about several times, fresh air, solar radiation, thermal insulation etcetera right and uh, you know this is typically a building shows air duct which brings in cool air and so on, air handling unit and return and so on. So, It is usually air conditioning period is intermittent except for buildings like hospital, which will have 24 hourly. So, you know, cooling load, if I look at it, continuous load would be something like this, right. So, load is actual load would be during the air conditioning period. The, this is the this is the air conditioning period, this is a continuous cooling requirement, but it may not be really required cooling required, required cooling may not be necessary or the building may not be operating at that point of time. So, there has to be some amount of you know air conditioning period the actual load might go somewhere there. So, overall thermal transfer value this is what is the OTTB stands for is defined as the maximum thermal transfer value possible 
into the building through walls, roof due to solar heat gain and outdoor indoor temperature difference. So, basically two issues you have got outdoor and indoor temperature difference right. So, it is the maximum thermal tra transfer value possible into the building through its walls and roof due to solar heat gain, sun, sun's radiation direct and temperature difference. So, this is this is a figure simply an equation is there we will look into that. So, it is a performance based index that means it is quantified, it is quantified allows trade offs between different envelope parameters. So, it is you know it is looking for envelope. Now, you might you might use one parameter in better form better you know better values for one parameter somewhat worse for lower worse value for some other parameters and yet you can achieve OTTB. So, it allows for certain amount of flexibility as you will see from the equation. So, u value of wall or u value of roof. So, you might have higher u value of roof or higher u value of glass, but finally OTTB value is the controlling value is a performance index. So, your OTTB value should be you know according to the prescribed value right u value of glass, window to wall ratio, shading coefficient and so on. So, this is again the diagram shows you the direct solar radiation coming in, some getting reflected, air flow inside and 60 percent 20 to 26 degrees centigrade because uh, 3 degrees centigrade we said is our uh, you know um, operating differential and so on. So, OTTB based building energy code can be ok all right. So, this defines the maximum thermal value permissible in the building through its walls roofs due to solar heat gains and outdoor indoor temperature difference. So, overall thermal transfer value overall thermal transfer value for wall you define as u w u value of the wall area of the wall all the walls and equivalent temperature difference. Now, this equivalent temperature difference is what the code gives you or you might estimate them also, but codes gives you for different conditions. Then this is for the wall, this is for the fenestration area, this is the solid portion of the wall. Then shading coefficient, solar factor and U of the glass or fenestration area of the fenestration and delta T is again the design temperature difference. So, equivalent temperature difference this is given for given location and given season you know given location actually it is given for the given climatic condition. So, you have choice of putting your own U values area ratios A F to A F to A W or A F by A W plus A F this is this you can choose how much wall area, but there is an upper limit of course, as you increase it, it will tend to bring in more heat. So, this is for the wall for the roof the same thing u value of the roof solid portion roof. If there is some sort of you know skylight or something and same thing it will have you know it gives you some value and uh, this is for the skylight u values one for the solar gain of the uh, skylight this solar coefficient shading factor this is what is so taken into account. So, this is the formula T t is the equivalent temperature difference that is given calculated over the years obtained through regression one can obtain them and these are given in the code actually. So, for the location for example, in a small country like Hong Kong it is not very difficult they can have temperature difference specified or Singapore they can specify the temperature difference, but is if it is to be done for Indian scenario then it has to be done for number of cities and different zo climatic zones. So, equivalent temperature difference S c is the shading coefficient S c is the shading coefficient this is solar factor and it is the outdoor temperature difference. So, this these values are given right one can generate them of course. So, overall you know so overall OTTB will be for the whole window would be I mean basically you know uh, this is a measure of net heat transfer. So, what does it give actually? If I look at this 
this gives you u a delta t area of the fenestration shading factor and solar coefficient. So, that is the amount of energy that is coming through the glass this is the energy that is transferred due to the heat transfer or u value of the insulation value of the glass. So, it is per unit area amount of energy transfer on a gross or average value for the whole year because this is an equivalent value which will be found or given in the code and similarly this is for the roof. So, for each individual component for ith component ith wall you can find out you know u as you have chosen this is absorptivity T d equivalent temperature difference equivalent and area that is for the solid portion of the wall this is for the fenestration etcetera right. So, this is the total thing divided by the area. So, for each wall or each roof you can find out because this might be different depending upon the orientation and then for the you know for overall wall for all the total for all the walls OTTP for each wall is known to you OTTP for each wall is known to you multiplied by the area of the wall divided by sum total of the wall. So, overall OTTP for the building also you can find out by taking OTTP values of each individual wall and roof multiplied by the area divided by the total area. So, finally, it gives you what it gives you an equivalent average heat transfer that will occur over the whole year right which you can estimate based on the values which are given in code. So, these values are given in the code for different climatic condition and then multiplied by the area simply and you calculate out right. So, uh, it can be little bit simplified in a way uh, direct solar radiation of course, will include alpha values. So, for that also separately you may have to calculate out T d equivalent. So, u of the wall is important, u of the fenestration is important, area of the fenestration is important, overall area of the important and shading you know the solar coefficient area and this for each one one can find out OTTP value. So, that is what it is. So, it is a measure of heat net heat transfer through the external envelope area of the building and can be expressed as Q by A per unit area. So, that means what you have done you have sum up for each component in the envelope multiplied by their area that is the summed up divided by total area of the envelope total area of the envelope that will give you in terms of quantity kilowatt per meter square or whatever it is. And this value this value should be below the prescribed value this value should be below the prescribed value right this value should be below the prescribed value. So, this is for the wall okay, I will come back to this I will come to the I'll come back to this again actually uh, you can see this this is you know this this uh, for it would vary this T d equivalent that will vary for different orientation all right that I will come to this a little bit later on let me see if I have something now this is not there. So, this values would vary for different orientation where direct solar gain is involved right. The also if I have a shading if I have solar you know if the shading device then the solar factor or shading factor has to be multiplied. So, there is somewhere there is SF this has to be multiplied. Now, these values are given for different orientation. So, a table of this kind would one can generate shading factor and uh, 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 you know for composite monsoon climate hot dry and warm humid climate. So, these values will be actually generated one can generate in Indian condition of course, Hong Kong they did not have to do all that because they have only one city. So, easily they could give you a guideline for T d equivalent 
d t etcetera etcetera and that is the end of it. So, basic principle here is you are given a set of values which has been generated for the whole year and these values are in temperature units equivalent temperature units or you know uh, in units of for example, in this solar gain coefficient units of solar heat gain coefficient that means ratio I mean non dimensional. So, these values are given to you that means average value for the whole year is given to you for a given climatic condition and given location. You got to multiply this with the respective walls and roofs. So, calculation procedure was not very complicated, but these values depend upon orientation and obviously, they will depend upon location also which may be uh, climatic uh, you know condition based. So, combining these two you can actually obtain the overall uh, OTTV value for all the walls and similarly for all the roofs multiplied by the roof area and multiplied by the uh, wall area respectively and divide by the total area that will give you the OTTV value for the whole building and that should be less than the prescribed less than the prescribed value right this should be less than the prescribed value. But when uh, there is one additional factor that will come in uh, when one is looking at it one is a value related to what we call solar temperature. I do not know whether I have introduced this one to you when radiation falls onto a surface opaque surface this is what is absorbed and equivalent temperature rise is given by H O or whatever I call it, but just for quick reference those who have done a course in building science they would have known supposing radiation is falling onto this surface there is a solid surface this 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 is a solid surface. So, this will cause radiation is I intensity of radiation here is I is falling onto this surface absorptivity is defined as a amount of energy absorbed divided by amount of energy incident. So, I is in this is a ratio energy absorbed because opaque body will absorb divided by energy incident. I think I talked about this earlier energy incident. So, this fraction will be absorbed uh, if this fraction is absorbed the effective temperature of this one will become higher effective temperature of the surface because it is a opaque surface it can absorb or reflect. So, 1 minus alpha is reflected alpha is alpha i is what is absorbed. So, whatever is absorbed that will result in alpha i is absorbed this will result in increase in temperature. Let us say this increase in temperature effective temperature is air temperature is T a plus some delta T increase in temperature. This would be the temperature increase minus T a right minus T a into H is a heat loss because when this gets heated up this surface gets heated up this the heat transfer will take place from here to the surrounding by convection and radiation and what I call it equivalent heat transfer coefficient. So, if the temperature rises T a plus delta T minus T a surrounding air temperature is T a then alpha i must be equals to this. In other words delta T the temperature rise of the surface I can write it as alpha i divided by H alpha i divided by h. That means, I have a surface on which radiation is falling it causes it to its temperature to rise then it will dissipate the heat out to the surrounding environment and when it dissipates the heat to the surrounding environment that can only happen when temperature rises occur. So, I want to quantify or find out how much temperature rise is occurring. If a steady state situation exists 
alpha i is what is absorbed, the amount that would be dissipated will be heat transfer coefficient multiplied by delta t. So, delta t is given by this right. So, when I have when I have opaque bodies receiving radiation, then this equivalent delta t corresponding to this or equivalent you know. So, my heat transfer will be given by u a you know due to simply this is due to simply this will be i alpha by h naught i alpha by h naught h. Now, this i would vary depending upon orientation, location etcetera etcetera and from time to time of the day and over the seasons and so on. So, I must find an equivalent value for this as well and this is this one, this is this one L S U stands for solar gain you know this is due to the direct solar gain whatever the heat transfer conduction heat transfer to this. So, this is again an equivalent value. So, you know u a alpha multiplied by this is again another component of the heat transfer because of the solar radiation falling onto the opaque body and window to wall area ratio is for unit area if I consider multiply this by 1 minus window to wall area ratio. This is one component and actually it has been seen that this is this variation the quantity of heat is not it, it varies not linearly rather in a parabolic manner. So, this term you know so this this coefficient I mean one can generate this form of an equation through regression analysis and u a is proportional to u a alpha square. So, s s u l s u. So, this is a this is actually the uh, quadratic component this is the linear component this is a second order component. So, this one can generate. So, how does one generate for many of the you know for 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 example, you you try to find out the q per unit area for a surface for surface let us say north surface south surface etcetera etcetera as a function of i by h which is for the whole year. And if you find that you find that this is not linearly related rather this is quadratic some sort of equation of this form. So, this would be q by a is related in this manner as you can see here this is a coefficient this coefficient is given in the code this coefficient can be given in the code the linear coefficient can be given in the code and 1 minus window to wall area ratio and uh, similarly for glass again it has been seen that it can be quadratically related. So, you one can make this OT table to be a little bit more complicated than usual by these values are actually obtained through regression analysis for large number of walls and roofs for each climatic condition and prescribed values in the table they actually come from there right. For example, L S u values and the shedding factor and so on. So, linear coefficients for composite climate for different orientation these values are given. So, these values are can be adopted you know some of them in case of Hong Kong code they have linear variation. Uh, they have given, but supposing one looks at the regression analysis one might find something of this kind. The all point that I would like to make here is that these values are obtained for yearly average for a given orientation and given shape I mean given orientation and given location and OTTB can be easily calculated for each wall and roof and sum it up for all the surfaces that gives you overall thermal transmission maximum values are prescribed in the code, maximum values are prescribed in the code and maximum values are prescribed in the code right. So, depending upon various climate this is this is what are given. So, one can calculate out the OTTB value and that should be less than the prescribed value. But best would be still a better and perhaps future approach to such codes would be you have occupancy class, occupancy class let us say residential uh, residential then institutional etcetera etcetera. Now, for each of this class you specify that the energy load yearly energy load per unit area should not exceed a value 
so much. That is the best control of the court, but it has to be demonstrated because policing is not possible. You cannot see that, but then it is to be demonstrated in design. So, demonstrated in design that the total area. So, if you know your area of the building, area of the building is known that multiplied by this value, the energy consumption by design, it's each de the accepted design should show that that value is less. Then, but at the moment, there are difficulties because the changes are too much, the equipment changes and so on and so forth, everything put together. So, codes, you know, the, the codes have come in order to control this and this is the code, some introduction to the code or more on information of the type of codes you can have. I think that finishes our discussion on this one, uh, familiarizing you with the possible codes that could be there and this, you know, many, most of the countries they have this now. Okay. <laughs>